This is part four of chapter five measurement for Math 107. We have metric units of measurement, and I'm going to show you how to do some conversions with that. So again, you know, read through the definitions and <clears throat> um, basically what the equivalencies are. And there's a nice handy chart here. Hopefully you're reading that in your textbook too or referencing it as needed. Here are some um, examples that we're looking at and what would be considered metric versus um, U.S. measurements. So a inch foot yard, that's U.S. B is kilometers, centimeter, millimeter. Those are all um, metric. Kilogram, gram, centigram is metric. Uh, kilometer and decimeter are metric. And then um, the foot doesn't belong in there. So we'll just exclude that one. So look at B and C. What's nice about here, it's a base 10 system so to go back and forth is nice and easy you can just use the powers of 10 whereas the other ones had all different kinds of um bases like uh for example you know ounces would be 16 and then um we didn't we don't talk about time in here but time is you know a different base we have 60 seconds and things like that so um working in tens is really nice for conversions so we look at example 5.11 we're on page 54 of your workbook or you can just write this out on paper is fine so if we um, start with just using our dimensional analysis approach i'm actually going to show this here just so you can see the um, different equivalencies but then there's a shortcut way which is really nice and it always works uh, so convert the following units as stated one kilogram to grams so if we do dimensional analysis we would write what we have just like before over one and then multiply by our unit fraction which again remember is a form of one because they're equiv equivalent to one another so if i look up here and i see um, I want to put kilograms in the denominator and grams in the numerator because that's what I'm trying to get to. And I want my units to cross out on the diagonal. So I have to think how many grams are in a kilogram. So I can look up here and see my um, equivalency kilo is 10 cubed which is a thousand okay so we have a thousand kilograms to our base unit which is going to be in this case a gram <clears throat> so that would be one gram so we have a thousand grams to one kilogram and then again multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom so i end up getting a thousand grams because my kilograms just um, cancel and then i have a one in the denominator now if i have a b here one centimeter to kilometers i would have what i'm given one centimeter over one and then um, meters two centimeters i would have one meter to 100 centimeters i'm working off the unit here so if i have meters to centimeters it would be one over 100 like that <clears throat> and then i'm going to do the third one here to get over two kilometers so that's what I want to have. So how many kilometers to meters would be one kilometer to a thousand meters. Okay, again, basing off here. And then what I do is make sure all my units on the diagonal cross out like I want them to. 
and then I multiply across the top, I'll have one kilometer over a hundred times a thousand. So it's going to be a hundred thousand kilometers. And if I actually divide that out, okay, so we have 0 0.00001 kilometers. Once you divide that out, um, for the next problem, part C, try that one as a classwork. That is one hectoliter to milliliters. And here are the conversions that you need to do to set up your dimensional analysis. So pause the video and do that. And then um, I'll show the answer. Okay. And here's the answer for that one. It should be a hundred thousand milliliters. I will get here on page 55 is a really nice one. It has all your equivalencies written out there. Um, and there it includes micrometers, which we might need for one of the activities. I believe we do need that for an activity. So keep that in mind, maybe jot that down. I don't feel like these are that necessary on the side here um, because the way we set up using dimensional analysis, we don't really need them. Also the method I'm gonna show you with the conversion bar will be a lot uh, more streamlined too. But if you're kind of thinking, how did that go again? What was the order? How much bigger? Is it bigger or smaller? Like megameter, if you're not familiar, I mean, it's right there in this chart. So I'm going to show you here how to make a conversion bar. Um, it's really helpful. You can write this, you know, at the top of any paper or when you're working just have it handy or just have it on an index card but we start up here with the um actually we're gonna start with the megameters let's we'll start with our biggest one megameters and then we're gonna skip over we don't have ones that we use in between so we're gonna skip a couple over so just leave like a couple of blank spots okay but we want to mark them for place value because we're jumping from a you know <clears throat> this um really big you know megameter down to kilometers okay so we have a million to a thousand so we need to leave a couple spots and then we're gonna have the kilometers and we have our hectometers and then our decameters okay and usually we put that like i'll put a little k there um to differentiate from decimeter and then we have our meter which could be for grams or liters so i'm going to call that unit so that's just what's equivalent to one um there okay And then we have our um, decimeters. So I'm going to leave that as D centimeters. Typical um, millimeters. And then a couple of spaces because again, we have that big leap. A couple of powers there to micrometers and we abbreviate that with a mu symbol it looks like a u and an m okay and this one is abbreviated the megameters just to differentiate there with a capital m and a small okay and again we, we're you know these are all meters for this one but it works the same for any of them okay um and the abbreviations you can see here like for decameter let's fix that one you actually can do it d-a-m would be the standard okay so the nice thing on this is 
we can just use these for our place value for moving our decimal. So if we have this um, given 7,225 centimeters, so I'm just going to write it a lot bigger. My decimal is actually here, right? I'm going to remove my comma. So the decimal comes at the end of a number if there's none showing. And I want to go from centimeters over to meters, which is my unit. Again, it would work for any type grams or liters also. And in order to get there from this conversion bar, it would take me two, two jumps. Okay, so that's exactly what I do with my decimal here. Two places left. So the direction is clear from getting to centimeters to meters, two jumps left. Do the same thing here. So your decimal is going to move. So my new answer would be 72.25 meters. So remember, this was centimeters. And really what I'm doing is dividing by 100. And if I did this by dimensional analysis, which you can choose to do, you would just have to use these um, conversions there. Get from one to another. Write it out. But you can just use a shortcut. It will always work. So now if I have 32.5 kilometers and I'm going to meters, <clears throat> I'm going to look at where kilometers is. So it's right here. Okay, so that's my start. And I want to get over here to meters. So I'm going to go one, two, three, right. So I'm doing three jumps right. Okay, so three jumps for spaces right. And then I'm going to move my decimal. One, two, three. And I just kind of leave spaces to put my zeros in. So 32.5 becomes just right. Three, two, five, zero, zero. And that's going to be meters, and I'm going to put my comma in here. So 32,500 meters. So it's a really quick way. So really what I'm doing there is multiplying by 1,000. Okay, and again, using these would be another way to do that. And you can kind of double check. Well, this is really a large unit of measure, the kilometers, so I should be getting more meters to cover that same distance as you know, the kilometers. So now this C, you could try as classwork if you want, um, but I'll also do it. So you could just pause here if you want. Um, megameters, again, we have to have that a couple of powers in between there. So this one's pretty big, right? So we're going to go from micrometers to megameters. So we're going quite a distance. And instead of writing, rewriting the whole number, I'm just going to say that's my decimal. I know I'm going left, so I'm going to go all the way over to here. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I know I have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have to add on five more zeros to the left here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 2, 5, 1, 1, 9. And that covers my jumps. So I'll just make sure I did that right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I hit them all. Okay, so that decimal moves to the left that many places. And then this is going to be megameters. Okay, and it's a really tiny number because it's covering, you know, the same amount of space as a very small unit when it had, you know, five 
1,425,119 micrometers. So that's why it's really important to have, to really know that there's a leap of two powers of 10 there in between each of these. Okay. So don't forget about that when you make your listing, if you have megameters and micrometers, you've got to space them out more. Okay, so I wrote the conversion bar at the top of this page. We're on page 56, so you can do this using dimensional analysis or the conversion bar. Um, we have a couple that will work really nicely for you to pause and do as classwork. Uh, the way to remember this, there's a nice little an acronym here, um, not for the mega and the micro, but for the main ones, we have um, King... Henry doesn't usually, for uh, the unit, drink chocolate, this with the C, and then milk for this last one. So kind of silly, but it always helps me remember. King Henry doesn't usually, this is your unit, it could be grams, meters, liters, uh, chocolate milk. So these are set up as word problems, um, but basically you're just converting and seeing if this is correct. So you're comparing 5,000 milligrams of medicine that you have a prescription for upon getting it filled. The dosage reads five grams of medicine. Are those equivalent or did the pharmacist make a mistake? So what you would do here for the classwork is you are going to convert milligrams to grams and see if it lines up. On this next one, a little more involved, you have one boxer weighs in at 85 kilograms. He's 80 decagrams heavier than his opponent. How much does his opponent weigh? So I think the easiest... Um, thing is to try to get it all into kilograms. So convert 80 deca decagrams to kilograms and then subtract. Okay. So see how that goes and then um, check back. Okay. So just to go over this, um, if we have 5,000 milligrams and we're converting to grams, we would be here at milligrams. You could Put the little g in if that helps and then the unit would be grams here and that is one two three jumps left <clears throat> so uh did the pharmacist make a mistake no mistake okay so this is correct for this class work here, we're going to convert to um, kilograms. So we have 80 decagrams. So decagrams are right here with the DA. And then we're going to kilograms. So that's going to be one, two jumps left. So then we would have 0.8. So 80 decagrams equals 0 0.8 kilograms. Now we can subtract to see um, how much the opponent weighs, right? So we have the boxer is 85 kilograms minus the difference in their uh, weights, 0 0.8 kilograms. This guy's heavier this one um and then that will come out to be 84.2 kilograms is the opponent's weight okay so make sure you interpret your answer as well as just doing the math part Okay, so now moving down to the bottom of page 56 of your workbook, I'll do this one as an example. So we have example 5.15. A two liter bottle contains 87 centiliters of oil and 4.1 deciliters of water. How much more liquid is needed 
to fill a bottle. So again, first thing we want to do is get common units. So we have to convert one or the other. So I think it's just easier to go into the um, smaller units typically. So I'm going to convert the 4.1 deciliters to centiliters first. So again, if um, you're kind of thinking, how would that, you know, work out, you can um, do the conversion bar. Okay, I'll just write it here that King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. It's all we need. Um, so we have deci liters. That's deca there. So deciliters to centiliters. It's only one jump right. So it's going to be 41. Okay, so we have the two liter bottle has 87 centiliters of oil plus the 41 centiliters of water. How much more is needed to fill the bottle? So another thing we need to do is convert two liters to centiliters. Okay, so if we look here again, going from my unit to my centiliters, I go two jumps right. So that would move this place to, so that would be 200 centiliters is in that bottle. And we need to subtract off what we have in the bottle. So what we have in the bottle now is the 87 plus the 41 centiliters. So we have 128 centiliters in that 200 centiliter bottle. And just to figure out the difference, I would then subtract the 200 centiliters minus the 128 centiliters I have in there already. And just go ahead and work that out to be 72 centiliters is what the empty portion is left. So you would need to write it in a sentence. I need 72 more centiliters more. Make sure you always add your units to fill the bottle. And that is complete for that answer. You don't have to be elaborate with it. So that gives you some experience with word problems and piecing things together and definitely go um, for getting everything into the same units and then working any operations. That's helpful. We could have put everything into liters. That would have worked too. That's fine. Um, but sometimes it's just easier to manage when it's in the smaller units for some reason, but it's, it's a personal preference. As long as you're consistently correct, that's fine. Um, if, if the question had read how many more liters is needed, then I would have to then convert back to liters and have it be like 0.72 liters, but it just asked me how many, how much liquid. So it really doesn't matter what units I could have chose, um, the deciliters if I wanted, but I definitely have to mark what those units are. That's really important. And if the question specifically asks for a unit, then we need to do that. And the weight up here, typically weight is in kilograms. So that's why um, we went that route. Okay, last page with this, only a couple more. Um, this is kind of a long one, but because just want to get this last page in here for the metrics. So conversion for temperature, we have Fahrenheit and Celsius conversion formulas. So instead of using like the conversion bar or the unit analysis, we actually have a couple of formulas that we would use to go back and forth from the metric unit of measure for temperature to the US unit of measure, which is Fahrenheit. So 
To convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit, we would do F equals 1.8 C plus 32. And to go the other direction, Fahrenheit to Celsius, C equals F minus 32 over 1.8. Now, if you're using a calculator and doing it um, just, you know, punching numbers in, do make sure you write down what you're putting into your calculator. And also make sure that you are using parentheses when you enter in so that the order of operations is followed because otherwise it, it may not calculate correctly for you. So we have the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. What temperature does water boil at in the Fahrenheit scale? So the first thing we always want to do for these type of things is write down the formula that we're going to use. So we're choosing um, <clears throat> to find Fahrenheit, right? So we need F equals 1.8 C plus 32. So I write my formula. That's what it's called before I plug anything in. Then once I plug in what I'm given, so I'm given that C equals 100. So once I plug that in, that's my equation. And then um, I'm going to add that 32 and then follow my order of operations. And my end answer is 212 degrees Fahrenheit is water's boiling point. I'll say boiling point of water. Okay. Um, the next one is water freezes at 32 degree degrees Fahrenheit on the Celsius scale, what temperature is this? So now we're going the other direction. So we would write down that formula to find Celsius, C equals F minus 32 over 1.8. So once you write down the formula, you're going to go ahead and plug in what you're given and, and figure out um, the answer. And for example, 5.18, you're going to do that as classwork as well and see if you can figure out which formula you need and plug in the values and get your result. So go ahead and pause and complete those. Okay, so here's the answers to those last two classworks there. Just plug in your values. Um, one thing here, 0 over 1.8 just would be 0. Make sure you do calculate that out. When we have 0 in a denominator, that's undefined. But for numerator, it's just 0. Um, for the last one here, the answer would be 78.8 degrees. Just follow your order of operations after you plug in. And your, that is your answer. Just interpret in a sentence. All right, so that's it for measurement. And have a great day.